What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So in this video I'm going to talk about how to model using a reference photo in your SketchUp model. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So the reason this is important is this can be especially useful when trying to recreate plans and layouts from old drawings or if you have sketches or other images that you want to incorporate into your models. So it, this is also a great way for an architect to bring conceptual versions of buildings into their models as well. Um, before I go much further I do want to note today's video brought to you by Placemaker. Placemaker is the smart uh, single click city creation plugin in SketchUp. You can bring everything in from high resolution images to rivers to roads to automatic building generation just by selecting an area and single clicking. So if you want to give that a try, that's got a six month free trial. Make sure you check that out at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash Placemaker. So let's get back into this thing. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in an old plan that I found on the internet by importing it as an image. So that's the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import our image. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to file, we're going to go to import, and then you're going to find your image that you want to import. So in this case I've got that stored in a videos folder. So and you can see how it doesn't initially show up. Well, What you want to do is you want to click this little drop drop down and you want to look for this option for all supported image types. So when I do that this shows up. Um, you can see this is a PNG image file. And so what you want to do is you want to make sure this little button for image is selected. You want to use this image as image. Then you can double click on this plan name or you can click the import button down below. And then you're just going to click once to set your corner point. Then you can cl click again to set your second point. So, and you can delete out your default model, or you can leave it in here for scale. That's actually what I'm going to do for right now. So, the next thing we're going to do is you can see how this comes in. And uh, first of all, I don't think it's going to come in as a very high resolution image. But what you can do is you can go up to your preferences and make sure that this is importing this as the maximum texture size that it'll allow. So, by default in SketchUp, I think this box may not be checked. So, you're going to go up to uh, Window, Preferences. Make sure this box for use maximum texture size is checked. Otherwise, sometimes this will come in. And you can see how once I did that, this became a little fuzzier. So um, you can't really read it as well, that kind of thing. So and the reason that, that gets set that way is because that keeps your model. So a lot of the time, those, uh, those higher resolution textures can slow down your model. So you can see how this gives me a warning when I do this. Um, but I want to go ahead and say yes. It's just warning me that if I don't have a high-end graphics card, this may slow down my image. So, but we're going to go ahead and click, or this may slow down my model. So we're going to go ahead and click yes. We're going to click OK. And you can see how this got better. Um, so it was a little more clear. So now we've got our plan in here. What we want to do is we want to resize our image. And so to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click inside this image. And I'm going to go ahead and in this case, probably what I want to do, because I don't want to resize my person right here, is I actually want to explode this. Because right now you can see how when I double click on it, I can't click inside of it um, in order to click on that image. So I can't actually edit the face. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to click explode. What that does is this turns this into basically any kind of face um, texture combination that you would have in your model. So this right now is the same thing as importing like a brick texture. It's just a face applied or it's just a texture applied to a face. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this and I'm going to go back and I'm going to remake it a group. So you can see how now that shows up in my outliner. Well, the reason I want to do that is because I want to double click inside of here and I want to use the tape measure tool to resize this or to set my scale properly. So we have to be a little bit careful. What we want to do is we want to click once on this line and then click on this other line. And you can see how if you look by the tape measure tool right now, there's a little plus mark. Um, so you can see how down below it there's a little plus mark. What that means is we're in create guide mode. And we want to hit control because we do not want to be in create guide mode. You can't resize your model when you're in create guide mode. So hit that control key so the plus button doesn't show up and then just click once over here. And what that does is that measures this length. You can see that down in the lower right hand corner. Well then what you want to do is you want to type in 24 feet and hit the enter key. And what that's going to ask you is do you want to resize the active group or component? And in this case we're going to say yes. And so basically what we just did is we told it, okay, between these two points, 
This is now, this needs to be 24 feet long. So it resized our image so that the distance between these two points is now 24 feet long. So now our image is scaled properly. Well now we can come in here and we can model we can model on top of this image um, in order to create our object. So if you wanted to, um, you could just get really simple and just come in here and you could just model out your building. So what I'm gonna do is I modeled a rectangle in here and then I use the offset tool to create a face in here. And for just a second, I'm gonna change the style just so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna go down to styles and I'm gonna click edit. And I'm gonna turn this to display shaded using all the same. And so all that does is that hides the texture images in here and it just shades these front and back. So you can see how I created this wall right here on top of my image. So it gets a little hard to see when there's actually um, this kind of shading in here. So, but what you can do first of all is you can see how when I drew a box across this face like this, it kind of took away my texture. Well, all I'm going to do is I'm going to sample this and I'm going to click on it and reapply the texture to this face so that you can see it. And so what you can do with this is you can come in here and you can push pull this wall up. And if you wanted to, you can see how this kind of keeps that uh, texture when it extrudes this up so your walls look kind of funky. So if you wanted to, what you could do, and you would probably want to come in here and remodel all your windows and stuff first, but you can just apply the default material in here so when you push pull it, it doesn't have all those weird textures in it right there. So you could just do it that way. You could just come in here and you could just model on top of this um, the way that we did that right there. Um, and that's a good way to do that, but what we want to do is we actually want to use these elevations as kind of guides in this model. So we want to kind of turn these up so we can see exactly where our windows show up, so we can extrude this, and we can actually apply them as textures as well. So what we're going to do is, if you remember, this is just a face with a texture on it. So all we're going to do is we're going to draw a rectangle around this face. Well, you can see how now these are two different faces, each one with a different, each one with a different version of this texture on top of it. Well, all I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Move tool in Copy mode to create a copy. So I just tap the M key, I clicked on the corner of this object, and then I hit the Control key and I clicked out here, and that created a copy. So now what we're going to do is we're going to right-click on this and we're going to make this a group. And if you want to, you can come into the Outliner and keep everything kind of. Uh, Organize, so you could call this south elevation. And so then what you can do is you can use the rotate tool to stand it up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use, the, I'm gonna activate the rotate tool and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna tap the right arrow key to lock, lock the rotate tool to this red axis. And then I'm just gonna come in here, I'm just gonna click on this corner and then I'm gonna rotate this object up around that corner. So you can see how now I've got this standing up version of this piece right here. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this. I'm going to click on this corner right here. I'm just going to move this so that it lines up with this corner right here. And so what we want to do is we just want to come in here and we want to look at this and double check and make sure that it's pretty close. So it doesn't have to be perfect. We just want it to be close. And what we can do with this is we could come in here with all four sides of this if we wanted to or we could just kind of model on top of this face so so now what I've got is I've got a face that's the exact same size as this object well now I could push pull this and so what I may want to do first is I may want to put these walls that I created in a group that way I don't get this merging on here like I was kind of getting right there so now these walls are in a group and I can also extrude this face along right here and so you can see how now what I've done is I've been able to come in here real fast with the reference image and create this object um, on top of this face and so now that I've done that what I can do is I'm gonna kinda of move this back a little bit. But the cool thing about this is the way that it's positioned, I can actually come in here with the materials tool. I can use the eyedropper and select it. And then I can apply that material to this face. Um, because they're in the same location, kinda of that, it kinda of projects this 
um, along this face so it's about perfect so and then you can hide each one of these as you go but I'm gonna come back in here and I'm gonna model the rest of these real quick All right, so you can see how I've got all four of these in place. Well, all I have to do now is, and I'm gonna move these away from my building a little bit, but all I have to do now is for each one of them, just come in here with the eyedropper and just apply the textures to the respective faces. So, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put these in their own group. So I'm going to uh, make these a group and I'm going to call this reference images. That way I can quickly come in here and hide and unhide these. So, and now what you could do is you could either come in here and you could kind of uh, offset this face a little bit to model a roof. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it, before I do this, I'm going to sample this material. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset this to create a little bit of a roof. Then I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to reapply it. So that way what I can do is I can come in here and I can actually offset this down so that I can come in here and I can actually model this roof pretty close um, to what's actually shown in the image. It's not perfect, but um, for what we're doing right here, it works pretty good. So, and then I'm just gonna make a copy of this and kind of move it across. I'm gonna flip it using this scale tool. And then I'll move it back. And then you can erase out this extra. And then now, you can erase out these extra parts and pieces that you have in here. and you can extrude this out to create your roof. And like I said before, it may make more sense right now for you to apply the default material in here so you don't get that kind of funky, um, so you don't get that kind of funky texture that doesn't look very good on that roof. And then you can come in here and you can extrude this out so that you've actually got your roof in here. And so now that you've been able to use that reference image to create this, you could come in here and you could either you could either come on top of this and actually model these windows or you could just kind of leave it like this. This gives you a pretty good idea of what this building looks like using these textures. So that's where I'm going to end today's video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Uh, did you like this video? Um, would you have liked to have seen something different or, or did you find it helpful just the way it is? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider checking out my support me page for links to both my patreon page and also some extensions you can purchase to support the show but in any case thank you so much for taking the time to watch this i really appreciate it and i will catch you in the next video thanks guys